Hey everyone, it's Flackfire. All of Battlefield 1's downloadable content has arrived, and each of the game's DLC packs has positives and negatives. There are some great maps, weapons, and vehicles in all of them, but let's look at how they stack up against each other. Here are all four Battlefield 1 expansions ranked from worst to best. Battlefield 1's Apocalypse DLC might be the newest expansion to the game, but it's far from the greatest. This DLC took the curious route of dividing content between traditional maps and an air assault game mode. There are only three maps featuring ground combat in the expansion, and we've come to expect four as a minimum. Although Air Assault added two aerial maps, I've yet to touch that game mode because, well, it doesn't really appeal to me. That's about half the DLC that I'm not playing, which leaves Apocalypse feeling a bit underwhelming. Apocalypse did add some new weapons, however. The Howell Automatic Rifle, LMG-0818, Ross Rifle, and Revolver Mark VI are all excellent, but the RSC SMG and Enfield Rifle are a bit awkward to use. DICE also added a couple aircraft that brought some visual variety, if nothing else. Another bright spot in the DLC is the Livens Projector. This emplacement is fun to use on ground maps like Caporetto, especially if you know where all the locations are and how to use them. If you don't, you can check out the video link here on the screen or in the video description. On a final note for Apocalypse, DICE didn't disappoint with the expansion's melee weapons. Apocalypse content was touted as being brutal and improvised, and they nailed that description with the meat cleaver and the pry bar. The challenge to unlock the broken bottle was also a nice touch. Although Apocalypse brought some solid additions to Battlefield 1, it just doesn't measure up to the amount of content added with my number three choice, which is In the Name of the Tsar. The Russian-themed DLC was, in a word, massive. It featured six maps and some of the largest in Battlefield 1, like Volga River and Galicia. However, for me, it's all about quality over quantity. I love Wupkov Pass, Brusilov Keep, and Saritsyn, but the others just seem to be Russian sniper conventions. What In the Name of the Tsar lacked with map quality, it made up for with the sheer amount of weapons. The DLC added a whopping 11 new guns, and most of them are excellent. Players love the Fedorov Avtomat, the Obrez, and the now beastly SMG-0818. The DLC also gave some love to the Cavalry class, adding the Lance. Finally, for vehicles, the Pudilov Garford was largely forgettable, but the monstrous Ilya Moromets bomber is a force to be reckoned with, especially in the right hands. In second place is Turning Tides. Although the naval-themed DLC had fewer maps than In the Name of the Tsar, they are all blockbusters. Achibaba is one of the best infantry-only maps in Battlefield 1, and Haligoland Bight features a crazy amount of vehicles and some hot behemoth-on-behemoth -behemoth action. Cape Helles and Zeebrugge are fun amphibious maps with some serious historical flair. The weapons in Turning Tides were fewer, but were more unique. The Assault class got the Mini Matico and the Semi-Auto Trench Carbine, while the Medic class added the versatile Farquhar Hill. Scouts seem to love the Arasaka and Carcano, and the Browning LMG is a solid option for support players. New vehicles included the C-Class Airship and the Destroyer. Plus, we got a new Elite in the Infiltrator. To me, Turning Tides is smaller in scale than the other DLCs, but it's all killer and no filler. Still, it can't really hold a candle to the best expansion of Battlefield 1, the very first one, the French-themed They Shall Not Pass. This DLC was just full of surprises. By bumping the number of maps from 4 to 6, developers kind of made up for the long wait for new content after Giant Shadow. They Shall Not Pass also added two of my favorite maps in Battlefield 1, Verdun Heights and Fort de Vaux. These infantry-only maps are everything I love about the Battlefield franchise. Soissant and Rupture aren't bad either, providing a compelling setting for air and land battles. The surprise addition of Nivelle Knights and Priest Tour for the DLC was a welcome one, and they gave players a taste of night combat. The expansion also added a new behemoth in the gargantuan Char 2C, plus a new elite in the Wily Trench Raider. 
The saint Germain tank stands apart from the other armor options due to its low profile, and don't forget the DLC added the Siege Howitzer. On top of all this, the guns of They Shall Not Pass remain some of my favorite to date. The Shogren Shotgun and Ribby Rolla gave the Assault class the ability to dig in. The Shoshaw gave support players a skill cannon. Scouts enjoyed the higher capacity offered by the Labelle, and medics love that one-two punch of the RSC. I'd be lying if I didn't say one of the main reasons this DLC ranks number one for me is the addition of the French army itself. Many players were bewildered by DICE's decision not to include France in the base game, given the location of the fighting on the Western Front. I'm happy to say They Shall Not Pass was a worthy tribute to the Poilu. What are your thoughts on Battlefield 1's DLC, and how would you rank them? Tell me in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, share, subscribe, tap that bell button to make sure you get the latest videos from the channel here in your notifications. To take your Battlefield 1 game to the next level, check out the Battlefield 1 Ultimate Utility app with a link in the video description. As always, thanks for watching.